All right, and with that, welcome to the KCP community meeting on this lovely August afternoon or evening or morning, depending where you are. Um, quick reminder, as always, this meeting is governed by the CNCF Code of Conduct, which boils down to let's be excellent to each other. Um, and with that, I do not see anyone new on the on the meeting. Um, there is currently one agenda point here. We can quickly talk about it. Um, so uh, since the Kubernetes 130 rebase is done, um, and uh, well, Kubernetes 131 just came out, and I basically want to talk about, uh, do we have any other major team themes that we want in KCP 0.25? Um, I guess the biggest major theme would be uh, well, Kubernetes 1.30 as a base. Um, and I was wondering if we should talk again about the open API v2 removal that we were discussing um, a good while back. Um, I think this was mainly something to be done re uh, that should optimize CPU and memory usage, something like that. I think it was fairly resource intensive. Um, yeah, does anyone have thoughts on the matter? Any theme that you would like to see in the release before you start thinking about it? Did we, did the PR got merged for the removal of VT or it's still there? Uh, it's still there. But did we have a PR for that, I think? So I think we had two PRs basically, let me show you. Um, we had these two PRs, which were, I think, towards the same theme. I think this one was never meant for being merged, something like that. I remember yeah, discussing this a while ago. Um, and I think this one was like going towards that because it was adding Open API v3 for the virtual workspace framework. Um, but basically, I'm, I'm not sure where things stand. Um, so. I was wondering if you think this is a requirement for the release. I mean, releases are fairly cheap. Um, we can cut a new one if, if this one won't make it into the release. Yeah, I'm thinking it would be good to remove it, but I'm always pro of release often and a lot instead of like once a quarter instead of release a cheap yeah I, I think i share that sentiment um our last release i think has been in let me see april um yeah april so accelerating that is probably also not a bad idea um i have the i think current main branch latest commit uh, running in an internal environment for a while. It doesn't look like it's leaking memory or anything. Um, it's functional. So I could also see us going ahead with a release. Yeah, makes sense. Maybe even our current release stuff is very manual too. Is it worth trying to start automating it? Maybe simple bash script, which you run, it does all the stuff, then you move on? I mean, it, it doesn't feel that manual to me. Let me quickly bring it up. We have a guide for that, right? So, um, I mean, this is basically, OK, create the tags, um, which I think we should be doing in any case. Mm -hmm. Generate release nodes. Yeah, I mean, maybe you know this could be automated, um, and then like sending. It. I mean, I think we could automate this, but honestly, I think the process is done pretty fast. So, okay, um, just we, let's leave it. I, I think with the amount that we're releasing at the moment, at least, I think automating it would be more work than just doing <laughs> it. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, um, 
then maybe let's proceed this way. I can open a thread on the Slack channel to, to gather some async feedback. Um, and if we don't hear from anyone regarding open themes they would like to see in the release, we can go ahead, go ahead with one. And well, then basically uh, someone can pick up the next task for the next release, which would be Kubernetes 1.31. Um, I was thinking I want to do that, considering we have now a few months, not that much pressure as we had before with the last one. I think this is something I want to dip my toes in. OK, yeah, so I, I already tried to, I was curious, I tried the, the basically rebase, but it's not a clean, what was I doing a rebase or cherry picks? I don't know. Um, so I, I know that you will run into problems. Let's put it that way. Um, I just haven't uh, quantified how big they are. Um, yeah, but that's, I would be surprised if it would be smooth. Yeah, yeah, but mostly it's small things that might have been moved around. I think we also have a couple of commits there that were for the generic control plane stuff. Yeah, we, we merged quite a few. Like one of the reasons why I want to pick it pick it back is like I think we merged a few of those me step yeah. into core. By doing that, basically refresh my own head. What else we can try to basic live stream. Yeah, I think there were a couple of commits that I think even Git was basically ignoring because they were the same upstream now. Uh, so yeah, but yeah. Um, but, but I'm happy to to uh, also work together on this if you need any yeah, support. Don't, don't worry, I'm going to ping you. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, then. Uh, then uh, open a thread on Slack and ask for themes. Otherwise, go ahead with release. Um, yeah, I'm. Yeah. Then, then we're gonna do that. Okay. Any comments on that? Okay. Do we have any other topics, any other business that someone would like to bring? Oh, Dave, I can see you talking, but I don't hear you. I think there might be some sound setting issues. No. Perfect. Yeah. OK. Um, KubeCon schedules out so i don't know if folks can just kind of highlight any tcp related talks and um that'd be good to know and i can add it to the list yep yeah that's true okay. um so our very own mj and stefan i think have a talk on the agenda to go into generic control planes i believe yeah it's a uh... Generic introduction, deep dive into generic control plane and KCP. So the last talk was very much uh, conceptual, how things could work and imagine imagining different future. This one, I think the idea was not to do the same, but do a bit of more deep dive into generic control plane itself because it's a new thing in upstream and how it relates to KCP. Very cool. It's on the 13. If you look for KCP keywords, it's in the name. OK. No. And then from the wider community, I think it's also worth giving a shout out. Uh, there is a talk that is called Best of Both Worlds, Integrating Slurm with Kubernetes in a Kubernetes native way. And it actually also, and this is a long link. Uh, it actually also features KCP. So oh. I'm really looking forward to that. 
and seeing how they use Slurm, oh, sorry, how they use KCP as kind of a control plane for Slurm, if I, if I got that correct. Yeah, Slurm is yeah. used for AI stuff, right? Yeah, it's an AI ML-based scheduler, which historically was very much uh, considered a legacy scheduler, but nobody invented anything better at this point. <laughs> so it's a uh, it's very heavy used by universities, educations, uh, certain type of organization. So honestly, I'm very much excited to seeing this getting its toes into Kubernetes land. There was a few previous attempts to make it Kube native. It didn't went very well. So I pasted the link to Carlos' profile too in the chat. So he's he's been doing that. And there is a third one which is not directly related to KCP, but uh, if you look for this in a in the agenda, Kubernetes workspaces enhancing multi-tenancy with intelligent API proxying. James Monelli. Andrea from Apple. They mentioned KCP because they're borrowing a lot, quite a few concepts and terminology and inspirations from KCP. But they operate in a bit different context. Uh, so what we're doing there, I think, will land into KCP in one or another form. Cool. Because we're trying to do it more in upstream stuff. It's a I had a sneak peek into how we build it. It's a very interesting perception on a Kubernetes multi-tenancy. So I'm one of my top two visits too. Cool. This is, I think this is the ones we know. We need to scroll for the schedule and find if there is anything else. It's at least the talks that come up when you search for KCP. Yeah, exactly. I wanted to say if you search for KCP, that are the ones who are coming up. Yeah, and last uh, for Paris, I think we had a blog post um, basically giving well, an overview of the KCP activities um, at KubeCon Paris. So I think maybe we, uh, we can prepare something similar for Salt Lake City. I'm not sure how well received it was. Uh, MJ looks surprised that we had it. Um, oh, that was okay. I'm, uh... <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it would be some nice orientation in case anyone is interested. Yep, yep, that's, I think, very much. So oh, awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm personally very excited that we are seeing like community uh, talks basically not coming from, from this group and still like introducing KCP to a wider group. And I think the Slurm control plane is a very cool use case for it. So yeah, I, I won't be there in person, but I hope to catch the recording to see what they're building. Another thing which uh which is happening, which I think is worth mentioning, is uh, uh, job ads popping up where people are looking for KCP experience, which is uh, worth mentioning. It means people are picking up these things too and uh, looking for people who have a bit bigger experience in this different Kubernetes multi-tenancy. Yeah, I think that's great. I think that is, you know, the KCP community coming together and starting to grow and well, starting to expand. By the way, that's a good point. Do we track anywhere adopters? Um, I think we used to have a friends repository, mm -hmm. but I think we archived that. Um, but I think there would be room for like in the kcp repository to have an adopters file or something yeah one uh, thing i would recommend is like from the Canadian community it's really hard to get people to make prs so it's easier to make uh issue template for adopters to just create 
and then someone else in the community will make the PR to add them to the adopters list. Because it's like much cheaper to create an issue and then file stuff than to like edit some markdown and, and so forth like that. I can here, let me see what I'm to pour it. I mean, I think that makes sense. And um, specifically, you know, not every engineer, I think, can make the decision to, you know, have the company show up in a in a in an adopters file. So yeah, I think if, if kind of like form what the issue template essentially is makes sense because it makes it makes it easier um, for maybe non technical folks in charge of the decision. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. Right. Let me let me also add this link to the. If we can borrow this one. I, I do like the community repository as well. Now that I see it, um, I think it makes more sense than like a friends repository or something that we had. So maybe we should also start a community repository. I think it might be a bit empty to, to this point. Like a let's maybe let's keep it in a single monorepo until we can. Like when it starts to be painful, we can split it out. Yeah, I would also say let's start with just the issue template and then an adapters file uh, and keep it as. Yeah, our community repo has like all this other stuff surrounding like governance and things like that. Yeah. And principles and blah blah blah. Right. I think that makes sense. Then we're gonna start with this. Okay, cool. I'm I'm excited. Which I maybe don't sound like because it's too warm and too late, but I am. Okay. Do we have any other topic or something to add to these? OK. Doesn't seem to be the case. Then uh, thank you, Dave, for the recommendation. Um, I think we're going to pick this up. And yeah, with that, enjoy your evenings, afternoons, mornings, wherever you are. And have a great Thursday. Bye-bye. Cool, cool. Cheers.